Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here with a new After Effects tutorial about how to work with the new effects masking options in the 2014 Creative Cloud update that came out pretty recently for After Effects and all the other Adobe applications. So with the 2014 update, there was a bunch of little things for the video apps, but the thing that I find myself already starting to use and probably one of the most useful things for motion graphics is the ability to mask effects separately and apply mask properties to effects one at a time. And you could kind of do that before by hacking together adjustment layers and things, but what this is great at doing is it really cleans up your project and simplifies things a bit and gives you a lot more control over effects without having to have a bunch of adjustment layers stacked up or duplicates of layers. And as an example, what I'm talking about here is a basic animation with a background vignette that's animating with an expression and text that comes in and glows left to right and a blur kind of reveals. And this is all being made with two layers. And before this would have been a lot more complicated to make to get this effect being isolated and this blur being isolated and the vignette kind of animating on only one layer. And then to push things a little further, adding one adjustment layer, but splitting up the effects a bit on multiple masks. So let's get started with building this and we'll go through a bunch of useful examples of how to use this really awesome new technique. So I'm just gonna make a new composition in After Effects and I'll call this New Way 02 because it's the new way we can do stuff. And as this first example, let's talk about kind of a basic gradient background. So the, before the way we would do this as one option is you create a new solid and we can call this BG1 and make it like a dark cyan and then duplicate that with Command D, go to Solid Settings, make it a lighter color, go to our mask, double click this, make a mask. So there's one color sitting on top of the other one and then press F and feather that out. And this works fine, but the annoying thing is that you have two layers and you could do some different techniques to get kind of the same thing. You can use radial ramps and gradients, but this was always a tried and true way. However, because we can mask effects, we can clean this up a bit. So I'm just gonna delete both of these and let's start over with just one. Let's do this all on one layer by combining masks and effects. So I'm gonna go to layer new solid again or command Y. I'll call this BG and I'm gonna make this a light and a bluish. And what I'm gonna do is add a mask and then mask curves. And I could have done the same thing with the colors but this is just a different way to do kind of the same thing. So I'm going to type in curves and drag that onto this. And you'll see that they've updated some effects here and there with just little things, curves being one of them with, there's more visual examples of what's going on in the other channels so I can see where RGB is, as well as we could draw curves and smooth it out. So not what I wanted to get into this tutorial, but it's good to note that in addition to all the stuff that they talk about on the page, there's a lot of little things that they've improved effects and things like that. So look out for those two. So anyway, I'll reset that. And what I want to do is pull down this white point and it's just going to darken the whole thing. But now what I could do is put a mask on this and it's going to mask the layer. But what we can do is point this curves at this mask. So I'm gonna go down here to effects, curves, and now there's this new compositing options for every effect that you add. So whenever you add an effect, this is gonna pop up too. And you can even change the opacity of it. So to make this work, I'm gonna just press plus, and because I only have one mask, it's gonna to default to that mask. And now when I change this mask and move it around or animate it, it's going to point it to this effect because it's related now with this mask reference. So what I'm gonna do on this mask is invert the mask and feather it. And now I have that with only one layer. And what's useful about this is because how this effect is being applied is directly controlled by this mask and we could animate all that stuff. So say if we wanted it to kind of be animating in and out slightly, we could animate the mask expansion and we could even command click and add a little wiggle expression by typing wiggle, left parentheses, one for once a second, comma, 100 for 100 units, and then right parentheses, and press enter on the number pad. And now when I play, it's gonna kind of animate in and out and breathe in and out, and this is all simplified to one layer. So that's cool, it cleans things up a bit. So let's keep going, let's add a text layer and talk about adding multiple effects and masking them separately. So I'm just gonna get my text tool 
and I'm using Trade Gothic and I'm just gonna type out animation and my paragraph is centered and I'm just going to put that in the middle. So say with this text, I want it to animate it on opacity and then have kind of a abstract shaped blur and then kind of a glow shoot across. So before you'd have to do that with a bunch of adjustment layers and it's not as direct, but what we can do now is add the effects and then animate mass to control their visibility. So real basic, I'm just gonna start out and press T for opacity, turn on opacity, go ahead 10 frames with shift page down make a new keyframe, go back and turn it down. So at least we can start out with this basic fade. Now let's say we want a fast blur on this and we want it to kind of move through this, not in a straight line. So what I'm gonna do is add fast blur and just turn it up to like 50. And so we get our fast blur. And with my pen tool, I'm gonna draw a non-uniform mass that kind of cuts through the letters a bit just to get kind of an interesting thing and make a point of what you can do with these techniques. So I don't need to be too exact. I'm just drawing a mask that'll cut through it and be big enough as the frame. And then when I close my mask, it's going to mask off the layer just like it normally would. But what I can do is go down here to my effects, fast blur, and now there's that same compositing options. I can press plus, and now it's gonna apply that mask to just that effect. So I can go back to my mask and feather that a bit. And now I can even animate the mask path so I'll do a keyframe at the beginning and double click the edges and just pull it completely covering up where the, the text is. And then I'll go ahead 20 frames and again, double click the mask, move it to make a keyframe. And what this is gonna do, if I offset my opacity and mask path keyframes, is it's gonna fade in and then this blur is going to be revealed. And again, we are doing this all on the same layer. So it's pretty useful. Now, if we want to keep going, we can add another effect. So let's add a glow to this and I'm going to add a glow and I'll just change this a bit to make it a little more interesting and pronounced and I'm not doing anything really specific, just messing around with the numbers. So same thing, rather than just having this come on and off and maybe animating the properties, what we can do, is make a mask. So I'm going to make a second mask because we can have it relate not only to this one, but we can have a whole stack of masks and stack of effects and have them pointing at different masks. So for this one, I'm gonna grab a circle and I'm just gonna have the circle animate left to right so we get kind of an animating glow. So I'll hold shift and I'll have it start over here and then just move left to right. And again, when we point the mask to this effect, it's gonna connect those two. So same idea, now I'm gonna go down to this glow and under compositing options down here on the bottom of every effect now, I'm gonna press plus. But for this one, I'm gonna change mass reference to mask two, and it's gonna look like the glow is not there at all, but now if I move this mask around, it's revealing this glow. So we can do the same thing as that last one. We can, on the mask, turn the feather up so it's smooth, and then turn on mask path, go ahead like 15 frames, double click the edges and just move it through the letters. And now this is gonna fade in. This blur is gonna reveal that cuts through the letters. And then this glow is going to animate with this mask. So with any animation, I can smooth those out a bit so everything kind of runs smoothly. So I'll press U on that layer and I'm just gonna add ease in to the opacity I'll overlap that first mask five frames and I'm just gonna have that ease out. So keyframe assistant, easy ease out, keyframe assistant, easy ease in. So it kind of shoots off and then I'll have this start at the same time. And this isn't as important to the new points, but it's always a good lesson to remember to add some eases as well as get your basic animation and then always have some time to go into the graph editor and pull those curves a little so you get some nice punchy animation with things smoothly easing in and out and shooting in and out. So now if I play this, I have, of course, the opacity and then this blur comes across and then this glow shoots along the edge. And maybe I'll make this a little longer just 
and maybe I'll pull back on those curves so they're not so extreme so we can kind of see what's happening. And again, now if I play and render this, we have the blur kind of revealing as it's fading in and then this glow shooting across. And why don't we just move this keyframe out a bit again, just so this doesn't shoot by too quick. Even though the point of this is all the effects, it's always good to have good animation and things smoothing out. So again, basic text animation, but now we're simplifying all this going on onto just two layers. The background's animating on an expression and two different effects are happening in kind of abstract ways all on the layer. And it's pretty cool and pretty useful. And this applies to any layer and any effect. So let's go one further. Let's make an adjustment layer that's gonna impact everything and cut it up with different mass and point different mass at different effects. So what I'm gonna do is do a layer new adjustment layer, and this is gonna impact everything below it. So I'm gonna add a hue saturation to this. And on this effect, I'm gonna check colorize, and that's gonna colorize the whole layer, which will impact everything below it. And I'll turn up saturation to something like 75. And again, what I can do is have this be impacted by just a mask. And this would be what an adjustment layer would normally do. What we can do is have a, a bunch of effects on it and have that at different masks. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna mask off this. And again, this is just what a normal adjustment layer would do. And then under effects, I'm going to go to that hue saturation, compositing options, and click the plus. And that's gonna be a mask one. And nothing really changed, but what's useful is say I wanted this side to be one color but just outside of the mask to be another color. Usually before you'd have to do two adjustment layers. Now I can, as an option, just duplicate this effect. So edit duplicate or command D. And now I have another hue saturation and I'm gonna just push this to a different color. So I'll start like this greenish. And rather than this mask, I'm gonna make another mask that's the exact opposite of this one. So what I'm gonna do is now in here, now duplicate the mask with command D and that's going to give me a mask two. And then instead of add for that one, I'm going to do inverted. And now nothing's being applied to that mask because I have an effect that's both on these masks. But now on this second hue saturation, I'm going to go to compositing options and change the mass reference to mask two. So, now what I have is one adjustment layer that's cut in half and has one effect on the left and one effect on the right. And again, this is a good way of just cleaning everything up because before you would have had to have a bunch more layers to do this sort of specific thing. And if we wanted to cycle through different colors on this single adjustment layer, we can add some basic expressions to both of these. So if we want this to just animate through these colors without keyframes, because we're trying to keep everything clean. On this colorized hue, I can hold option and click to open up expressions. And then on that, I'm gonna type time, which will relate to the seconds in the composition, times asterisk 20, press enter. And that's gonna cycle through different colors and rotate this. And then for the other one, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna option click and I'll press time times a different number, say, say 100, and I want it to start at this 97. So I'm gonna put this whole thing in parentheses and do plus 97. So that's gonna take time times 100 and add 97 units because it's gonna reset to zero, which will get us to there. So I'll press enter. And a fun little math expression to you have this adjustment layer animate through. So you could do the expressions before, of course. But what's useful now is, again, we have one adjustment layer. We have it split in half on one mask that exactly matches up without having to have two adjustment layers. And we have all of these other mask effects happening on the background and on our text animation. So little tips and things like that, and it's just one little new feature, but it can be incredibly useful to really simplify your composition, make things a little easier, and add a lot more control if you're trying to apply a bunch of different isolated effects to one layer, or say you were doing a keying project and you wanna key out different parts with different key light effects, as an example. 
You can just do it all in one layer and then mask them separately and it gives you a lot more control. So I hope you found this useful. It's one little feature of the new 2014 Creative Cloud and After Effects that I'm really excited to use and I've already started to use. As always, be sure to subscribe on Vimeo and YouTube slash Sean Frangella and hit me up on Twitter if you wanna ask questions at Sean Frangella as well as check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash Vital if you wanna ask questions, request tutorials and interact that way. And thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video.